Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to answer a question from Colin Holdsworth, K0NNK. And he has a question, I think it's pretty common uh, when hitting repeaters, although his question is a bit, um, <clears throat> a little bit, hard to understand, but we'll see if we can uh, do something. He's uh, talking about hitting a repeater. We'll uh, assume it's a yeah, two-meter repeater. He hit it and said it was full quieting, uh, but then says that the uh, repeater feedback was very fuzzy. Um, now, there's something to explain. The way a carrier-operated relay works, the receiver on the repeater is listening for a signal. If it hears a signal above the threshold, it will uh, close a relay, which will turn the repeater on and it will transmit, okay? And uh, oft times the repeater also needs to sense a CCTSS code along with just the carrier uh, to reduce problems that uh, may be from intermod. So the thing is that Often the threshold for the repeater opening is very low and your signal into the repeater is not necessarily full quieting. And so you'll open the repeater, you'll let up, you'll hear the repeater broadcast its identification tones and uh, it may seem full quieting to you because the repeater's up high, it's got a big antenna, and it doesn't necessarily have a lot of power, but it's very well positioned to give you a big signal. Now, the question is your signal. It was enough to open the repeater, but is it enough to be full quieting into the repeater? And the answer is you won't know until you get a signal report. So this situation can happen often. You put out a signal, you, and what, <laughs> what we call kerchunking the repeater. You give it a, a little signal, brief signal, and then listen to the repeater's squelch tail or its ID. It may be full quieting on your receiver, but your receiver has got a little rubber duck antenna. You've just got this antenna right here, which is very much less than optimum for a, uh, a receiver antenna. And the repeater may put out enough of a carrier that it seems full quieting to you on the comeback, okay? But the problem is your signal into the repeater may be just barely enough to open the carrier-operated relay. And if somebody gives you a signal report, they will say you're way less than full quieting. So I think that's what's going on here. Um, Colin, I think what you need is an outside antenna for your radio. Um, or, uh, if you're in your car, putting an antenna on the roof, MFJ makes some extremely inexpensive antennas, uh, that you can do for that. Uh, you could call somebody like DX Engineering or Ham Radio Outlet and tell them you want a mag mount for your antenna, a cheap MFJ mag mount. They all work about the same. Okay, so uh, the question of how big a receiving impact have on receiving, well, the receiver is what it is. You need a bigger antenna, okay? Um, antenna rule number two, height matters. You need to get the thing outside, the antenna outside, and up high where it can receive uh, the uh, signal full quieting from the repeater. You can still do it with your handheld. It's just that this rubber duck right here, well, first of all, to be a two meter antenna, it really ought to be 19 inches long. So it is um, base loaded. You've got a stinger in here and it's just not a good antenna. Okay. So there you have it. Um, I hope that uh, you're able to get your uh, problems fixed uh, with regard to that particular repeater. 
you need more of an antenna or you can uh, use a mobile rig like this one right here. Uh, this is a, um, and I don't think it's plugged in. Uh, this right here is an Anytone, um, let's see, D578UV. Okay, you've got a radio here, handheld, you know, a radio like this Anytone. Okay, and there's a mountain somewhere, and there's a repeater antenna on it, and a repeater, R-P-T-R, -R, repeater. Okay, your signal goes from here up to here, and it's just loud enough to open what's called a carrier-operated relay, which turns this repeater on and turns it back into a repeater, and it starts to transmit back. Now, when you stop transmitting, this repeater will continue to transmit for a, a moment. It's called the squelch tail. Squelch tail, okay. Now, so this repeater transmits just for a short period of time after you transmit. So if you do what's called kerchunking the repeater. And I don't know if this one is. This is an any tone. Okay. Okay, Water Dog is a 440 repeater that's not very far from our house. Now you'll note that if I hit the transmit button very quickly, it'll send a signal up to the repeater. The repeater will sense that signal and will send a, start acting as a repeater. But after this goes down for a moment, the repeater will still transmit a squelch tail for a minute. And we can hear that here. Okay, you heard the squelch tail. Now, KE0OG just uh, testing, KE0OG testing. We got all kinds of interference in here on things. Okay, so, okay, so the squelch tail comes back for a minute. Now, you can judge the quality of the squelch tail by listening to the receive part. A little bit of noise on that, just a little bit of noise, okay? Now when I'm transmitting, what you hear around here is this thing interfering. Let's turn off my computer speakers so we don't hear that. Okay, that goes into something, who knows? KE0 OG testing. Now, I have no idea from that how well this is being received by the repeater. It's enough to open the squelch, but it's not necessarily enough that it's full quieting to the people who hear the repeater. If this just barely opens a squelch and the repeater sounds a little slightly less than full quieting, there's a very good in, uh, chance that you're barely making it into the repeater. So what I would suggest that you do is get either closer to the repeater, bigger antenna, use a mobile rig or something like that, and then have someone else give you a signal report. That's really the only way you will know how you are getting into the repeater. Now, if you're using DMR or one of the other digital modes or something called a parrot mode, where you say something and the parrot speaks back to you, so you'll say something, it'll go into the repeater, and then it will come back to you. And then that way you can tell how well you're getting into the repeater. So there you go. I, I, I hope that helps there. I think we're going to edit out all except the very, big, very last part. Uh, so Colin, good luck with your uh, the receiver. The 0 0.2 microvolt threshold is fine for your radio. There's nothing wrong with that.
So, um, bigger antenna. Bigger antenna always helps. But first, get somebody you know to give you a signal report on that repeater. That will tell you how well you're getting into it. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, if you'd like to help support this channel financially, please go to dkassler.com slash support. See if you can find a way there that works for you. Please also, for my training materials, go to learn.arrl.org. And that's where you'll find the training videos from now on. Note that you need to be a member of the league to find them. The uh, technician uh, videos are outside of the paywall, so you can get those just by going to ke0og.net uh, slash um, training, and each one of those videos in there will refer you to the spot outside the paywall uh, in the ARRL infrastructure that you can get a, uh, uh, the videos. All right? So until we next meet, 73.